Welcome to your top-rated business, entrepreneurship, self-development, and smart investment podcast. This podcast is hosted by creator and founder, Dr. Dustin Steffi, and also hosted by coach, music producer, and influencer, yours truly, Jaden Rush Norvell. We are blessed for our many accolades, such as being nominated for the People's Choice Awards for Best Business Podcast, as well as raising over $5,000 last year for the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation, as well as for the Boys and Girls Club. Spending a global reach, our podcast is in the top four downloads in four countries. Without further ado, welcome to Chopping with Fire, ladies and gentlemen. Let's chop it up. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Chopping with Fire. You are joined with your host today, Dustin Steffi. I have a wonderful, wonderful lineup planned for today, but first and foremost, Let's dive into a couple things. Please, if you haven't done so already, I know I sound like a broken record, but this is how we get better. Join us on our social media platforms. We have a Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok, Snapchat, and well, everything in between, including a website. Where I would start first is at our website, www.choppingwithfire.com. That's C H O P P I N with fire.com that house is everything and it kind of gives you a benchmark on where you can go we definitely have tons of updates we are in season two we're going to be killing it this year we killed it in year one let's continue to make that difference in year two but without you guys commenting and giving us some information we can't really make that difference so please join us on socials today lastly We still do support our home and local charity. Please, as we go into the new year, let's hit our goals. We have big audacious goals this year. We want to raise about $50,000 for CF this year. So if you guys haven't done so already, please head on over to cff.org. Remember, CF is a rare lung disease that is like breathing through a straw. So if you can imagine breathing through that little hole, to try to get through your day. It's not fun at all. And we want to do our part to make sure we're supporting so we can find a cure for CF. So please, if you haven't done so, let's head on over there and let's donate today. I think that's all the housekeeping that we have. I want to dive right into our episode and have some fun. I have on with me William Wang. He's an amazing, awesome person. I got to talk to him in pre-roll, but I want you guys to kind of hear from him some accolades he has and that support his credibility are he was a part of corporate IT. It wasn't working out for him. As we all know, with our nine to fives, they never normally work out. They're just a job. He moved on to build his own seven figure business. And he's currently running that today within his marketing agency. He is a jujitsu badass, so don't mess with him. He has a brown belt, and he's about to get his black. So uh, if you guys need some techniques on how to defend yourself, reach out to him. He loves to surf. Uh, From what he told me, he is not a professional at it. So let's not not, uh, get lessons from him quite yet within the surfing world. And then, of course, most importantly, he is a father of two. So, William, how are you today? Great. Thanks, Dustin. Thank you for that amazing intro, dude. Really appreciate it. I got you, buddy. That's what we're about here. (laughs) We're about about having the cool people on, you know. That's awesome. No, great to be on. And, um, yeah, like, happy to share any and all parts of my story that hopefully inspires and helps, uh, you know, someone out there listening, who's looking to escape nine to five, or even, you know, figuring out what they want to do with life, for example, not saying I've got to figure it out. I absolutely don't, uh, but happy to share any part of my story or anything that could help. Yeah. I think the most important thing and, and my listeners are really good about this is just really connecting with people, really understanding what it takes to be an entrepreneur. Um, We are not one of those podcasts where it's like, hey, today's topic is this. We're we're more or less like just everyday people just trying to kind of give information and hopefully maybe one or two people out of the thousands upon thousands of listeners resonate and then they like this episode and they kind of jump ship and do what they wanted to do or what they were destined to do. 
Yeah, that's awesome. Love it. Uh, quick question for you, man. Can I? Can we swear on this show? Is this a? Is this PG? It, yeah, yeah. It's an explicit show, so I mean, I, okay, I cool. keep it to a minimum. Try to like, <laughs> you know, we we want some uh, education, but yeah, definitely. <laughs> Okay, sweet. Uh, so, so just in case you can't tell by the accent, I'm from Australia, and Australians do 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 love to swear. So, <laughs> part of the culture here. We're good to go with that, buddy. So let's uh, let's fucking get started. <laughs> Fuck yeah, man! <laughs> let's do it. So let's let's dive into you. Like, uh, I mean, obviously, I brought up you. You were with NIT before. Let's let's get a little bit of your story, buddy. Yeah, so I guess um where did it start from? I, I kind of looking back at life and you know the journey and all that kind of stuff. Um started, you know, son son, son of um, some immigrants, uh came over from, from China to Australia, uh grew up in, in a pretty rough neighborhood, but getting taught, you know, um about everything essentially that you don't want as an entrepreneur, it was kind of beaten into me. You know, the whole idea of don't talk about money. Don't, you know, get attention, fly on the radar, play everything safe. That was essentially the upbringing I had. I'm not saying it's wrong, but you know, it, it just, it, it, it was what it was, right? Um, it's like the whole immigrant story about survival and things like that. So went through all of that, developed an extremely introverted personality and, but kind of struggled, but kind of struggled. I think for me, upbringing and how I am naturally just wasn't really aligned. And it created a lot of issues and uh, challenges, let's just call it, as I was going through, including, you know, phobia of the phone, not being able to, to communicate properly. Um, and it kind of meant that by default, I went through university and went into a path of uh, this IT career. And, you know, it was a good career. It was a six-figure career, but I absolutely hated it. Uh, but for what I thought my personality was, I thought it was a perfect career for me. But as I started going through that, um, and we can dive into this in more detail, happy to share again, any and all parts of it, it just turned out that it just wasn't what I wanted to do. It wasn't what I was put here to do. Um, and really, really just didn't like what I was doing on, um, on a day-to-day -day basis. So that's kind of the story, you know, how it all kind of got going. Um, yeah, just found myself in a career that I just absolutely hated, even though on the outside it was perfect and people were like, dude, what are you doing for your career away? Um, it kind of, it just felt like every single day was just an exercise in boredom, an exercise in just, you know, not, not doing anything, right? I just felt like I was wasting my potential here. Um, and so that kind of led me to thinking about business and that in and of itself is kind of like a, like a whole journey. It's been I think six or seven years now since I quit my job and started um, my business full time. And it's only the past three years where it's been quite a good journey. The first three were a massive struggle as well. So um, I lost some pack here. <laughs> so I'm a extremely extroverted person. So <laughs> I, in school, col college was awesome, right? Because that's where I, I made a lot of different diverse friends. So the introverted extroverted battle came into play and it was it was funny because i i don't know why but i had a lot of introverted friends <laughs> and so i was the one that like kind of got them out of their shell almost yeah that's awesome i i think for me anyway i actually really like hanging around um people who are extroverted because it means i don't have to do the talking like they can just go and talk to people and you know be loud and i just chill like i'm just in the background hanging out and having fun Shit, you got a good point there. I'm about to call some of these friends and be like, you guys used me because I'm an extrovert. <laughs> uh, it, it, just, it just works. IT, dude, IT's a, a big field, right? And like, if I could do my schooling all over again, that's probably the field that I'd want to go in. However, with the knowledge that I have now, I don't want to work for the man. You know what I mean? And I don't, I just don't think it's advantageous. And and honestly, these days, it's getting worse and worse, right? Because these companies are taking advantage of people by uh, giving them 10, 15 different job roles for the same pay. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, it's it's an interesting um, idea. Like looking back, knowing what I know now, I still think it's a good industry. But like all industries, you know, if you have a passion for it, that's when it becomes really good. 
Um, I didn't have a passion for it. The only reason that I got into IT was because my, my dad is from, you know, he worked in IT. He absolutely loved what he did, computers and programming, all that kind of stuff. I hated it, but I did it because it was easy for me. Um, having the help at home, uh, at that when I was going through for university, I was essentially, you know, I, I helped people sell websites on the side. Um, so I had started to dabble in outsourcing. And I figured out that people that I was outsourcing to could help me do my IT assignments. So that's kind of why I went through it. I actually started with several different degrees. Um, I started with, I started my university path uh, in environmental engineering. As I wanted to, you know, save the environment, do all that kind of stuff. Um, if, if engineering, though, required a lot of mathematics. And the first maths class that I sat into, the professor that part was like, oh, let's talk about imaginary numbers and the number I. And I was like, shit, dude, I don't even understand real numbers. What is this imaginary numbers bullshit? Like, what the fuck's this? So very quickly figured out engineering wasn't for me. And then I went into a whole bunch of different things and, you know, science. And then I tried to become a teacher, but then I realized I don't want to deal with 30 screaming kids every day. Like, what am I doing here? And so finally settled on IT just because it was the easiest path. Um, yeah, looking back at what I, what I, with, with the current knowledge I've got, I would even say, you know, if you don't know what your path is, maybe don't even go to university. Maybe just have different jobs, talk to different people, just, you know, figure out what it is that you're actually passionate about and then go and pursue that. So a lot of things that we've brought up in the past is the old school way of thinking where you go to high school and then after high school, you get your degree and all of that. It's kind of different now, right? Because we have this powerful thing called networking. And furthermore, we have this powerful thing called people who talk and help others to be successful. Kind of like what we do with this podcast, kind of like what you did. I know your buddies, Luke, we had Luke on. Uh, a little bit ago and uh it's 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 an awesome thing i mean you're in australia right now i'm in the states and you and i are chatting it up right so we have so much technology to be able mm. to upscale ourselves ourselves you know where exactly. is it bodes the question is education still the important pathway or is is it a different pathway? I mean, if I could do things over again, buddy, honestly, like truly, mm. I'd probably go to a trade school. I mean, there's a lot of trades yeah. right now that need help. And a trade school is a lot shorter, a lot less money, and you make a lot more. But mm. I mean, here I am today. I have a, a doctorate in organizational leadership, right? And so I need to use the resources that I have doing it all over would be great. I could look at the past, but I can move forward and I can do things such as what you did. I mean, you went to school to get an IT degree. You're not in IT. So. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it, you bring up such a good point. Like I think I would do something similar. Uh, so my wife's family are actually in, 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 in AR trade. So, so they build stone, you know, beautiful stone kitchen bench tops and, and kitchens, and they've got a very successful business. So me looking at that, right, knowing what I know now, if I had to go back and, and do the journey with the current knowledge, I definitely would go through and, and do some of my hands as well. That being said, I'm terrible with my hands, uh, probably just because I haven't had the training, but I break everything I touch. So I, when it comes to, you know, doing handy, handy people stuff around the house, that's just not me. Um, but I, if I could go back to it, or, you know, if I had to choose my career again, I definitely would, would actually start there because I think it's just, there's such good utility around knowing how things are put together, knowing how to fix your own house, knowing, you know, if the lights turn off or if the world goes to shit, Hey, I've got this skill set that can actually mean something. I think that's a really good thing to have in the back pocket. So I, I just learned something about you, fun figure. Uh, you are not going to be working on my bike or truck anytime soon because uh, it'll be broken. So good, good call there. <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm, you're, <laughs> you're, you're right, brother, right? Like everybody has their own niches, right? For me, I kind of grew up around my dad in construction. So he's very much so hands-on, which therefore extrapolated to vehicle work and, kind of doing my own things i some hobbies for me right i like working on my bike i like working on the truck i like 
uh, building some things, refinishing things. So I'm very much so hands on. Obviously, it's made me zero dollars, but hey, whatever. It's a hobby. It's fun. Dude, it, honestly, man, if the world goes to shit, that's such a good skill set. Like, if the, if the, if, the, if society crumbles tomorrow, I'm gonna be sitting around going, "What the heck do I do? Like, I does anyone want copy? Want me to write copy for you? Like, do you want marketing? No one wants marketing. Like, if the world goes to shit, but if you can fix a truck or a bike, that's such a cool, cool skill set. Uh, it's actually probably something that I'll start developing and start learning about as well because I do want to have that you know just in case anything happens right shit brother the world's already going to shit so we <laughs> we need we need backup plans now 100 <laughs> percent. so let's let's transition a little bit then we we all know that you're an it it badass but you're not in it anymore so how the heck did you burn the boat to go from an IT job that was stable to building a seven figure job. And I don't know, being able to surf and do jujitsu and have fun. Yeah. I mean, that's a whole journey in and of itself. I, I wouldn't say I was great at IT. I think um, one of the things that I realized pretty early on, and I think it's very lucky that I did was that IT just wasn't my calling. You know, I was working around these guys who were just super passionate about what they were doing. They would just self-educate about writing code or doing all this kind of stuff. And I, I hated it. I honestly, you know, it was Monday mornings was such a miserable time for me. I just hated the idea that I've got to wake up, get on the bus with everyone else looking miserable, get to this cubicle and just sit there for eight hours looking at a spreadsheet. Um, it just wasn't my idea of how I wanted life to go. And for me, I looked at people who were 30 or 40 years down the career path uh, and looking at where they were and where I was. And I saw that a, a lot of them were very unhappy. Uh, a lot of them, you know, felt that they were on top of their game or on top of their career. But if you look at the pay discrepancy, there was a certain cap to it. Like there wasn't like you can spend 40 years in an IT career. Or nowadays, you know, if you're in the right startups, you can. But um, in traditional IT, there's a cap into the salary because you can never get paid more than the CEO. You can never get paid more than the business owner. So there was a real cap on what you could do in terms of income. And the second side of it was it took such a long time to get there. So I made a pretty quick jump early in my career because I, I got good at interviewing, looking for new jobs and things like that. So every six months, I'd get a pay rise, essentially. I'd put myself in position to get a 20 or 30% pay rise. So by the time I was 24, 25, I actually had a you know, $150,000 a year salary. Um, but for me, it was like, it, it just, I just couldn't do another 30 years of it. Like it, it just, the idea of it just terrified me. And so I decided very quickly, Hey, I'm going to go into my own thing. I'm going to be my own boss. I'm going to have complete freedom, but it didn't quite work that way because there were so many limitations to it. Um, I tried things like affiliate marketing. I tried things like selling websites. I tried things, you know, everything under the sun. But when you have a hundred fifty thousand dollars salary you have to replace, it becomes pretty hard in terms of what you can actually do or how you can do it quickly in a way that that works. Um, yeah, and we can go into it a bit more. But I also felt like I left my job a little bit too early as well. Um, and the transition between having a set salary, being able to pay the bills, to having to put food on the table with my own skills was actually a pretty difficult one. And I think that's what a lot of people might struggle against uh, if they don't know you know, how to actually do it properly. Yeah, let's dive into it a little more. I mean, a lot of people that listen, right? They listen because they're sick of their job. I mean, I I think when I was with Luke, right, we brought up the job happiness statistics and it was blaring. Mm. 60% of people are unhappy with their jobs. So they need they need to kind of hear these stories to kind of understand like, how do I get out? It, is it possible? Or am I, am I screwed? Right. Am I screwed? And am I working mm. at a ceiling where some of these people, buddy, I mean, they, they're hard workers and they're making 40 grand a year. That's poverty, mm. dude. Yeah, it, it is pretty tough. So I think looking back at, if I was telling myself you know, sitting across the table for myself and I first went into it, I would actually say that it absolutely sucks being in the job, but do it until the business is ready to support you. 
So one of the biggest mistakes I made was I actually, so let me just, just go, go ahead and give you the full story. Uh, I was, um, I figured that to replace my job with the high salary I had, I had to become some kind of consultant or do some kind of service because I wasn't going to sell a $20 widget and sell my way to $150,000 a year. Um, so I decided very early on, one of the things I love and I'm passionate about is actually reading and writing. And I was actually quite good at writing. Um, so I decided, look, let me become a copywriter. And so I started freelancing a little bit to bring in some income on the side. And it got to the point where I, some of my clients were like, hey, can you do some social media writing for us? I'm like, yeah, sure, of course I can. And I figured out the social media side. Um, and what happened was, as I was you know, building up my, my portfolio, as I was getting good at the social media stuff, there's a local magazine to where I live. And I, so I just happened to bump into them during a networking meeting. I was going to every single networking event I could, uh, more so just so I could speak to people, right? To get over my, 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 my introversion. But I met this guy who ran a local magazine and he was like, oh, dude, I've got a hundred clients. They absolutely love me. Why don't you come in? We'll partner up. You can sell your social media services to them. They were asking me for it anyway. We're, you know, we're going to replace your job in like a week. It's like, sweet, awesome. And he convinced me to leave my job. And so I did that. Uh, but the first meeting I walked into with this guy to sell, sell social media to his clients, they were just like, dude, get the fuck out of my office or I'm going to call the cops. Because what he actually did was he was such a hardline salesperson. He would go into the offices and sit there and go, I'm not leaving until you pay me to be in the magazine the next quarter. And people would be like, I don't want to be in a, you know, I haven't got a result. They're like, I don't care. I've already planned for you to be in my magazine. You're, you're in it, right? So his customers actually hated him. Um, and I walked into his business thinking, oh man, we're going to make so much money. His customers love him. I'm just going to sell a bunch of social media packages. And it didn't quite work out that way. So I would say that looking back on it, yes, the job might suck, but if I had stayed in my job for another six months and just built things up on my own, I would have been two or three years ahead of the curve in terms of our growth. Sounds, sounds pretty similar to like my story. Uh, I mean, I'm still in my nine to five right now, but I have this podcast. I consult on the side. My buddy and I just opened up a pressure washing business. Uh, uh, nice. The biggest, the biggest thing I tell everyone is it isn't about going all in in one thing. It's about diversifying. And then as things start hitting traction, you start finding what your niche is. Yeah, exactly. I think that's such a, um, I think that's such an underplayed part, right? You see it on all the time with you know these rakes riches stories. Oh, he just did this one thing and he or she now makes millions of dollars and does all of this. But it's if you speak to anyone who's actually legit, the journey's never like that. There's always hard times and struggles, and there's always you know things that you try and it doesn't work. And you just get to the point where you've tried and failed enough times where there's not that much more that you can do to to fail, and you start winning from that point onwards. So I think what you're doing is actually amazing. Like build it on the side and only jump when you have the parachute ready. Yeah, I had I had someone on that said burn the boats early, which, you know, it works for some people, but not everyone, right? I mean, this podcast is a good example. So we're in year two right now, right? And yeah, we're coming out the gates firing. We're coming out the gates firing because we had a year one. So there mm. were many many, many nights that I had with my partner, right? Where I bang my head up against the wall. Like, what do we do? How do we do this? How do we monetize? And the answer is, is it isn't about thinking about and chasing the money. It's about creating the content, uh, upscaling yourself as much as possible. And then eventually it's mm -hmm. gonna, there's gonna be a gas pedal where the rocks are automatically on it. Exactly. I'm not a huge fan of the whole burn the boats type play. Just because, and everyone's context is different, right? Like if I had started business in my 20s before I had kids and all that kind of stuff, yeah, maybe. Maybe that would have been the right approach. Um, it's it's also it's also the approach I kind of accidentally took. I, I'm, I'm not saying that I went, you know, and burnt all the boats before I was, um, but I, I left my job before I was ready, but I had skills developed in the background and I had a side hustle that I've been working on for a couple of years before I did that. But, you know, you've got to look at your own context, right? Because for me, I was, when I left my job, my son was just born. So my wife wasn't working because she's obviously taking care of both my kids. Uh, and we needed to pay the bills, right? We had a mortgage. We had, I had to put food on the table. 
it wasn't feasible to just go burn the boats. I'm going to drop my entire salary. I'm, we're not making any money. Who cares? I'm just going to go make a shot at like, it's just not feasible. So that's why I'm not a big fan of that advice in every context. I think you've got to look at the context of the person you're giving the advice to, because for, you know, a, a, a 40 year old family man or mom or, you know, whatever it is, there's certain responsibilities that you can't just burn when you burn the boat. Whereas if you're younger and you're 18, you're trying different things, you're living at home anyway, you've got zero expenses. Fuck yeah, burn the boats. Like you don't have any boats to burn, who cares? Um, so the context is very important. Yeah, I agree. The biggest thing that we bring up in this podcast, honestly, between you and I is do your own research, right? Obviously the advice that we give on the many episodes that we have, some of it will click, others won't. That's why we have a diverse amount of guests so we can reach everyone in some way, shape or form. But the biggest thing that I enjoy about doing this the most and, and you and I can agree on this is we have such a diverse amount of people that come on that we talk to that we have fun with that we learn from where you can at least take one key golden nugget from everyone and kind of apply it. Hmm. Yeah, that's, that's a great philosophy. And I think that's the way I, you know, I, I approach life and, and coaching as well. So I've got, you know, I, I probably spend about six figures a year in terms of coaching and education for myself. Um, but not everything that my coaches tell me is always applicable to my situation. So it really is about, you know, taking what's like the Bruce Lee quote, right? Like, um, you know, learn from everyone, take what's useful, um, just make it your own, discard everything else. Uh, and I'm quoting that pretty badly, but that's the principle. So what you do right now, is it something that can be duplicated with others where you think that they would find success or is it kind of one off and you got lucky? I think it's a bit of both. So I think I got lucky in terms of I found something I was really passionate about and I love doing it and I got good at, which is writing. Uh, and the luck element was finding that, but I've always been a big believer in, in tuning your skill set and becoming better every single day. So I had to work hard at becoming a better writer. I then had to get a lot better at selling and marketing my, myself and my services, which is really a difficult struggle. And then I had to get better at being able to build a business because I was freelancing for, for a long while and freelancing is great, right? If you're just trying to escape nine to five, hey, maybe your first step is actually to become a freelancer because then you've got these things that you're learning like marketing, like sales, like client communications, which you might not have the skill set right now. And you're going to have to take the time to learn that skill set. And once you've learned that skill set, like the, what I'm working on now is I've just gone through a, a period where I've really had to learn about leadership hiring operations and those were my weak areas and for us to grow i had to learn that so i spent the 12 month last 12 months really focusing on that versus focusing on growth and the next 12 months i'm going to be spending is really around um empowering my team members looking at operations so i don't have to work in the business every single day but you don't just get to you know where i am or where someone else is or depending on the business overnight it, it is literally a grind every single day so the, mod, so, so the motto I, I have is 1% a day, right? Just learn or improve by 1% a day. And by the end of the year, you're 37 times better off. So if someone's in a job right now, don't think about when do I leave this job? Like the job might absolutely suck balls and it probably does, but just think I'm paying the bills. I'm paying for myself to have the flexibility and freedom to learn and develop a passion or a skill set that's very useful that I can build on. And just know that it takes time to build a skill set, right? All these people out there promising you can start a marketing company and make 10K a month in like 90 days. Bullshit. You absolutely cannot. Um, but if you're willing to dedicate a year, two years, three years to it, you absolutely can build a good business around what you really like. It's kind of where I'm at with the podcasting, right? I mean, there's a lot of... Uh lot of uh forks in the coal right now i i'm going to be releasing a podcast school because i think social media digital marketing podcasting it's an important thing to learn and for some of these companies that want to get their branding out a little more they don't do it right and so mm -hmm. i can definitely teach on that i have my book uh i like you like to write as well uh We'll see if the book's good though. <laughs> but no, I'm yeah. sure it would be. 
you know, there, there are many avenues. Like I, like I said earlier, diversify in business. And then at some point it's going to take off. But you also brought up a really important point as well, Dustin, because it's not like you just turn around and decided I've never done a podcast. I'm going to create a podcasting school, podcasting course. You've done it for a year and you know the ins and outs of how to do a podcast and how to grow a podcast. So therefore you can go and comfortably teach it to someone else. Whereas a lot of the people out there just think, oh, I'm just going to buy a course from someone, learn all the stuff, copy what they do, and I'm going to be free. It doesn't quite work that way. You have to be at the cold face. You know, you have to be waking up and grinding every single day. So like when I, before I became a full-time freelancer with this copywriting stuff, I, I did everything I could under the sun and I hustled for two years outside of my nine to five. It was actually eight to six because, you know, when you're getting paid a pretty big salary, they expect more than nine to five. But um, so I would um, you know, get home at about seven because I left the office at six, have dinner, play with my kids. And at about 9.30, 10 p.m., I'd start four hours of work on my own business, on my side hustle. And it took two years of that before I could comfortably go go full time and just be be willing to jump ship and try to to do this, you know, whole whole business thing. Um, but people have got to understand like it is a process and a journey. You don't get there overnight and you just you don't buy a course and 90 days later make 10 grand a month. Like it just doesn't happen. No. So like for me, if I'm looking at uh my business plan with the podcast school people are going to need support, right? So they're going to learn the basic skills. So I'm going to give them what I didn't have because I failed a few times and spent way too much money on some things, right? And then from mm -hmm. there, they're going to need the support, right? And that's where I come in to support them, like, because they're going to have questions, right? They're going to fall on their face and they're going to need help. So I think when I look at it, it's it's a positive. I'm giving back. I'm not only enjoying what I do, because I do enjoy doing the mm. podcast. I do enjoy, even though it takes a long time, making the videos and the social media aspect and the ads and all of that. But I want others to be able to do it as well. You know what I mean? And do it successfully. Yeah, exactly. I think the the biggest thing, you know, you know people have asked me in the past, do you have a course? Do you have a program? I actually don't because I think, you know, the way that I'd approach it is I can't give someone information um, and they, you know, and have them internalize to the point where they can do it. Right. If I was to create a course or program, the way I'd approach it is I can shortcut the learning process. And for example, if someone wanted to, if someone turned around and said, Hey, how do you put a seven figure marketing company? I'd say, okay, well, it's going to take you years and years and years, but rather than doing it over a period of five years, which that's how long it took me to get to the point of, you know, six years or whatever, to the point of seven figures, I can help someone do that within three years. And so that's the value that we have. That's the value that you've got, right? You can go and help someone shortcut their podcasting journey so that they can achieve what you've achieved in half the time, but you can't just give someone the skills or just if they don't take the action and do something, you can't help them shortcut that. There's still work involved. I think that's the hardest part with society today. And maybe you all agree or disagree, but we're in a society now where everybody wants instant gratification, right? So what I mean is they want to make that money now and they don't want to mm. put in the work to make that money. Whereas if you take a step back and look at everyone in life, right? Including myself and you. Let's go back to our six figure or our six figure jobs, our, our slave jobs, right? We didn't make that six figures immediately. And furthermore, we had to put in lots of work for that. So I want everybody to understand that when you go down the journey of chasing something that you enjoy doing, it comes at a cost of you're going to live it and breathe it for a long time before it starts automating itself. Exactly. Like I, I only saw quote unquote, like I, I success, right. And I, I use that word very sparingly because I by no means think that, you know, we're that successful or my company's that great. We've got so much room to grow, right. We've got so much potential we haven't lived up to yet, but in terms of where it started to be able to comfortably pay my bills and afford the lifestyle that, that we live now, it took me about three years, three and a half years to get to the point where it's like, oh, cool. I've, I've replaced my, my, my salary. 
right? And so what people kind of do nowadays is every 90 days, they try and do something new. I'm going to sell stuff on Amazon. I'm going to do this, you know, I'm going to um, trade crypto. Or I'm not saying any of those are wrong. All of those things that you see out there actually works, but you just need to dedicate yourself and give yourself the time to get the mastery to make those things work for you. So if you're changing every 90 days, you're beginning at the lowest level again every 90 days versus just knowing, hey, I've got a five-year horizon. I'm not saying five years is, is you know, what it takes for someone to leave a job, but at the same time, it might be. Like, are you willing to dedicate yourself to a skill set you can build over five years to leave your job, right? Can you think in terms of a longer time horizon? Because if you can think over a time horizon of five years, you're guaranteed to be so good at it by the end of the first year or second year that you've got more potential to leave the job versus changing every 90 days and then starting from scratch again. Um, so people, I completely agree with you, man. People want results too quickly without having to put in the work. But it's the people that can think in longer time frames who are willing to get their hands dirty, who are willing to wake up and eat shit every single day. They're going to be the winners. Exactly. The the ones that are successful are the ones that are able to put in the work and the time and the blood and sweat and tears to find that success, right? Exactly. So with your with your business that you built, you do copywriting, correct? Uh, we've evolved a little bit from that time. We do um, pretty much end-to-end -end marketing now. So how we work is clients will come to us and they'll just be like, we just want to grow the business. What do we do? And so we'll go in and set up the entire marketing piece. We'll help them with the sales thing as well, You know, train salespeople up, give them scripts, and pretty much just grow people's businesses for them. Um, so that's kind of what the stage that we've actually evolved into. Do you have employees that work under you or is it kind of everybody has their separate business? Yeah. So I've got uh, about 20 employees at the moment. Um, so we've grown to a fairly big size and uh, yeah, we've, well, I think we've got a fair bit more growing to do, but at, at the moment it's about 20, uh, a mix of, you know, onshore, uh, offshore, outsourced assistants as well, virtual assistants, uh, but about 20 people in the company at the moment. That's awesome, buddy. Congratulations on that. Thanks, man. It's, uh, you know, as, as we sit here and record this, it's very early into, into, into the new year. It's, um, it's always a good time to reflect. And, you know, if I had looked at where we are now three or four years ago, I wouldn't have believed it myself. Um, so I think it goes back to the idea of, you know, just take one day at a time, one step at a time, uh, and just have a clear intention of where you want to, go but just know that if you think of a long enough time horizon you're probably thinking too small um so if you hit the revenue we've hit now i i i think you know we're actually at the beginning of the journey whereas if you'd spoken to me three years ago i'd be like that's absolutely bloody amazing and so now i'm thinking in terms of bigger multiples um, but i know that when i get there my mindset might be different again Heck, I'm in the same boat as you, buddy. I'm looking at the new year, looking at all we achieved in uh, the podcast, especially someone like me who dove into it, like, well, I don't know what I'm doing, but let's do it. And now here I am today. And it's it's a night and day difference. I mean, a year ago today, right? I started this mm. journey and it. I go back and I look at the episodes we recorded when we first started versus now and it's... It's just so insane. It's it's always it's always for me anyway. It's always cringy looking back on videos and podcasts I've been on in, in the past, and it's like, oh man, I can't believe how bad I was. But then you just have to do it. Like if you don't do it, you don't get good. Um, so it's always a good time to reflect. I wanted to delete them all, buddy, and then and then my <laughs> my buddy was like, no, don't do that because it shows the journey. It shows it shows how much better it's gotten and the people that have stuck around see that the scary part is though, is you get new subscribers, right? Or a new person that listens, they go back and listen to episode one. What if you lose them? You know what I mean? Yeah. I think though, I had a lot of similar fears because I've been podcasting a lot and you know, guesting on podcasts. I had my own podcast for a little bit, which I'll probably revive pretty soon. Uh, and one of the things, you know, I had the same issues. I was like, man, I sound terrible. I 
stuttering. I say a lot of ums and ahs and little phrases that really just tick me off when I hear it now. But it's also real. Like it's also the real you. And one of the things I've never wanted to do, I, I don't want to present another version of myself, right? Where if someone bumps into me on the street, they're like, oh, you're completely different. You're an absolute dickhead compared to how you sound on the podcast. I never wanted to be like that. So it's always good to have the real me out there. And I think it's, it, you know, it speaks to growth and um, your mission as well of what you're trying to do to have the real you unfiltered. That's what makes us so different. Like I, I listen to a bunch of different podcasts and I can tell that it's robotic, it's edited, it's very like crisp scripted, right? Whereas our podcast is raw and I like that raw mm -hmm. version of it because it's people sitting around talking, trying to help others to be successful and provide some value added activities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And I, I think that's how people relate. You know, well, for me anyway, I, I relate to the raw stuff rather than super edited stuff because the super edited stuff, it just makes me feel like it just, it's not reality. Reality is messy. Life is messy and chaotic. And, you know, and I think if you learn from experiences, you know that there's never a black or a white. It's always the gray in between where, where we live. And so the, the super edited polished versions are just like, this is exactly what this is. This is exactly how it should be done. It's like, no bullshit, dude. Like if there's so many gray areas, you can't just come through and just say like, this is the truth of it because you know most things in life aren't binary. So why are you presenting it like it is on a podcast where like this format here, someone might listen to what I'm saying going, that, that dude's an absolute idiot. And like in their context, they could be right because my context is different to, to their context. So, you know, I don't want to present a context that's not my own because then I can't defend myself and go, no, I'm right because like, it's just too complicated. The raw is awesome. <laughs> this is my point. I've gone in a bit of a circle, but this format is, is awesome, man. Keep it like this. Yeah, definitely, buddy. I mean, I have, I have people that I look up to, right? So Tony Robbins is a badass. I, I like him. He has his own podcast. His is way different from mine, right? Because it's very structured, very oriented right and i get bored listening to it even though he's like an idol to me because it's not raw right and then you have joe rogan which you and i both know joe rogan has zero fucks to give like he'll do whatever <laughs> yeah. and it's it's just fun and it's fun to listen to his because it yeah. is super raw like super super raw mm. right and then you have yeah. uh brandon bouchard which is another person i look up to i like him a lot he's a very mm. motivational person uh you have derm dude which you've probably not listened to a ton of my stuff but once you do like drew drew's a badass he has his own podcast and like he said when you own your own business you have the freedom to do whatever the hell you want yeah exactly exactly i i think you know i think the main takeaway is just find something that works for you and just you you do you if it's a raw form podcast awesome if it's polished awesome just find whatever works you know what what works best for you um i think everyone listening here you know I, I, it's good to model what others have done in terms of if you think you know they're successful or you know if you think that they've achieved something you want to achieve it's good to model them but don't be them don't do exactly what they're doing because there's context and there's things that are going on in the minds and the lives that you don't know about. Um, so just find something that works for you and just double down on it. And that's what the new year is for us. We're going to double down on everything that we've done, lessons learned, and continue moving forward to something good. Uh, I know our listeners are probably confused. So are we talking about a podcast? Are we talking about seven figure <laughs> business? What are we talking about? So let's rewind a little bit. All of what we just talked about extrapolate into people being able to chase their own dreams so what we just talked about was kind of identifying and finding yourself and it's okay to fail sometimes as long as you keep getting back up it's okay to ask for help i'm i mean god knows that i'm i'm fortunate and lucky right yes i may be interviewing you guys but at the end of the day, if I needed something, I can reach out to any one of you guys because we've developed that relationship and I have help. I have support. So networking, 
probably in my mind for this episode is probably the number one thing that is most important is network, start doing education on, on things that you want to do, ask questions, and then start building what you want to build. Yeah, it's, it's such a good theme. I think the people around you can make or break your life. And um, I've been extremely lucky. So the, I mean, the suicide, so I work extremely hard at, at networking. Uh, when I first started my business and I had no money, I'd go to every free networking event I could, shake every hand I could and just talk to people. Um, and that's, you know, that in and of itself has led to the growth of the business in the way it has. Um, if it wasn't for the people in my network, I, I wouldn't be where I am today. But you get lucky with it, the harder you work. The more networking events you turn up to, the more people you meet, the luckier you're going to get to meet that one person that turns everything around for you potentially. Um, and then, you know, at, at, then at different stages, um, there's other things you can do. For example, for me now, I pay to go into different networks just to meet people there. But it all comes back to what you said, like network is everything. And then that leads to the next thing. So networking is important. And then learning from other people's mistakes, I think, is another important thing. So do your research on what other people's failures were so you don't fall into the same pitfalls. Yeah. And I'd, I'd actually add to that because um, even though I've you know got a lot of really great coaches and, and support uh, around me, some mistakes you do still have to make yourself to truly internalize and feel it. So don't beat yourself up too much. Like don't go and ignore everything it could just tell you saying, oh, I've got to make my own mistakes. Now there's some stupid mistakes you can really avoid. You don't need to learn it like that. But some mistakes you only internalize and becomes real to you after you actually make them and feel the pain from it. So yeah, there's lots, lots of gray areas, man. But networking, definitely learning from others, learning from mistakes, um, you know, and just do, doing doing what comes naturally to you and, and being yourself, I think it's going to get you a long way. And I know that, you know, there was, wasn't anything solid from my side in terms of here's what you do if you want to leave your job. But then there's so many different ways of doing that. Like I've just seen people create insane businesses out of, like some weird crap, right? I, there's people on online selling bath water and be, become a multi multi millionaires. There's people who you know um, do consulting and, and and create great businesses. There are people who sell stupid little gadgets and they become multi million. Like there's just so many different ways of doing it. You just got to find the thing that or the way that you resonate with most and just give it enough time and enough elbow grease to 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 make it work for you. Shit, buddy. I remember like five years ago, you remember those stupid little fidget spinners that made that person millions upon millions of dollars. Yeah. I mean, you know, you bounce in, create some shitty little gadget, sell millions of it and then bounce out. Like, that's, that's awesome. That's a, that's a freaking dream come true right there. If I can make a couple million dollars on that, then I can do whatever the hell I want. <laughs> exactly and in terms of you know the freedom and, and things like that i think it goes back to like, i i'm a big fan of uh, it's not up behind me i'm actually in the process of moving and selling my current house so i i normally have a bookshelf behind me that we've built and all the books in there and one of the top books i always read every single quarter so i read it four times a year is the four hour work week by tim ferris and i read the first section where it's like dreamlining and fear setting because to live your dream life, it probably doesn't cost as much as you think it will. Uh, and then, you know, knowing what that number is in terms of monthly, you know, what you need to hit to live the way you want to live, it, it might just be like it's well within reach, but you've just got to give yourself the time and space and, and invest in yourself to do that. Agreed. You ready for the fun part? Yeah, man, let's do it. Let's do it, brother. So I... I like to end every episode where my guests get to kind of leave one key nugget out of their kind of repertoire. So it's your turn, right? If you could give one super important piece of information that helps others, what would that be? Hmm. In, in what context? As in, it can be business, it could be personal life, it can be whatever you want. So like a lot of the past ones have been uh, networking, have been keep your relationships together, have been maybe save mm -hmm. 
something, whatever the case may be, one important piece of information? I would say, I'm, I'm going to cheat, interrupt a few things in here. I would say, don't take your life too seriously is the number one thing. Um, because, you know, it's it's meant to be fun, right? Don't take life too seriously. I think the other thing is expect to eat shit for a long time before you get results. Just know that there's work, right? Work is is is, is always there. And um, maybe the first thing would be, it's never as great as you think it will be or or as bad as you think it will be. So your worst nightmares probably will never come to pass, but your biggest dreams probably won't either. So we're, you're going to be in some kind of medium, right? Some kind of scale between that. And besides from that, just, you know, life's fucking short. And just pick something that you really like doing, get good at it. The best or the top 1% at anything in the world always makes money. But you just don't, you know, find something that you can dedicate yourself to being a top 1% or in and the money would follow. So for me, that was in, in, in copywriting, right? In lead generation, I wanted to be, I still want to be the best in the world at it. And that means I'm going to grow my company, my client's company, but I've got a passion for it. Like I love reading, I love writing. That's what I want to do. Um, but if you hate writing, don't pick that because you're never going to be a top one percenter. Like if in, in my spare time, I read and research on writing and how to use AI to write, how to do this. Like that's my my geek out stuff that I do in my spare time. So if you can't compete with me on that level, find something where no one else can compete with you on. Some good advice right there, buddy. Now for the listeners that resonate with you, how do they get a hold of you? Yes, yeah, so the probably the easiest way is to hit me up on LinkedIn. I'm on that platform quite a bit. Um, I'm either Will Wang or William Wang, but find me, I've got a profile picture up there. Find me on that. Uh, drop me a message when you connect with me. Let me know that you found me for this podcast so I know who you are. Um, and then, yeah, that's probably the best platform. I put up some stuff on there, you know, post, personal stuff, business stuff, uh, probably the best way to to contact me. Awesome, buddy. I, I want to just thank you for coming on. Thank you for your time, obviously. I know, uh, well, I don't know what time it is there because you're in Australia and I'm in the States, but I'm sure it's polar different time than here, so... Uh, it's, it's perfect man this has been so much fun thank you so much dustin you've got some awesome questions man and uh yeah if, if your audience or, or yourself need any help in the future please feel free to reach out and yeah it's, it's been it's been fun it's been awesome thanks brother